Welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech and my series of exam question compilation videos on key topics you might still be struggling with. This particular video covers quadratic inequalities. I've taken related questions from my past paper walkthroughs and given them to you here back to back. These compilation videos will give you a deep dive on topics you are still finding challenging giving you more of an overview, helping you recognize command words, identify key features and strategies, building your confidence and helping you apply these techniques for future papers. If you find it helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. It will really help me out. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, why not do that now? I'll be making lots of these compilations over the next couple of weeks and you'll get notified of these as soon as I upload them. Right, let's get into it. Question 17, m squared is greater than 9, circle the possible values of m. Uh, well, I already know what it is, but uh, assuming you, you don't, doesn't leap out at you, uh, then the easiest thing to do is just to, to square all those numbers to see if it's bigger than 9. Okay, so which ones give you a number bigger than 9? Uh, so if I've got 2 and um, 7 eighths, and I square that, just tap it into the calculator using the square button. Uh, that comes out to be 8.265 and change. Uh, so it's roughly uh, 8.26, it's 8.27. It's just too small, isn't it? That's not bigger than nine. Uh, 2.8, I already know, is not bigger than nine. Um, 7.84, similarly, three squared is nine. Nine is not bigger than nine. Uh, the only one that can be bigger than 9 is that one at the end. I'm just going to show you uh, if you've got negative 7 over 2 and you square it. Uh, that gives me 12.25. Okay, now I spotted that one straight away because 7 over 2 is 3.5. And, and if it's negative 3.5, it's just going to give uh, when you square a negative number, it's still going to give you a positive one. Uh, so I, I could spot that that one was going to be the right answer. Question 21. Here is a sketch of y equals f of x, where f of x is a quadratic function, and we see that the graph intersects the x-axis at x equals minus 2.5 and x is equal to 1. And we need to circle the solution for f of x is greater than 0. Well, this graph is f of x, and it is greater than 0 for the bit where the graph is above 0. Okay. So f of x is greater than 0 for that section of the graph. Either side of that, it's below 0. But between minus 2.5 and 1, then f of x is positive. OK, so which boundary is it? So our value of x has to be bigger than minus 2.5 can't it be equal to 2.5 because because then it would be equal to zero and it's strictly greater than zero and it must be less than strictly less than one okay so we want x between minus 2.5 and one which one is that it's that one there look question 24 here is a sketch of the curve y equals x squared plus 4x minus 12. Uh, so it's a quadratic Work out the values of x for which the quadratic is less than 0. Give your answer as, as an inequality. Okay. Well, this is the graph of y equals x squared minus four, or plus 4x minus 12. So if we want to know where this inequality is, is less than 0, we're saying where is this curve less than 0. Now this curve is less than 0 when it's under the x-axis because y is equal to x squared minus plus 4x minus 12. So y is going to be less than 0 under the x-axis. OK, so we want to know uh, the values of x for that part of the curve. So basically, all we really need to do here is to find this point and this point, and then write that as a, re a region. OK, uh, so let's, let's find those things. How can I find the roots of a quadratic? Well, I can find the roots of a quadratic by factorizing it. So x squared plus 4x minus 12 is less than 0 is the same thing as the factorized form of x squared plus 4x minus 12 
What are the factors of 12? Factors of 12, uh, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Which one of those have a difference of 4? These two, aren't they? 2 and 6. So I can factorize x squared plus 4x minus 12 as x plus 6, x minus 2. Okay, so that's going to give me, if this was a, an equation, x plus 6, x minus uh, 2 is equal to 0, that would give me roots then at minus 6 here and positive 2 here then. It's the values of x that make those brackets 0. Okay, so the values of x uh, for which this range is less than zero, or this graph is less than zero, is the values of x between here and here, these values, okay, but not including the endpoints, because uh, it's strictly less than, isn't it? So then x must lie between 2 on the right and minus 6 on the left. So it's just x is greater than minus 6, less than 2. That's it, all done. Question 17. Solve the inequality x squared minus 5x minus 6 is less than or equal to 0. Okay, so I think first off we need to factorise this, don't we? So let's, let's say that's the same thing as two brackets multiplied together. Uh, so I've got x at the start, x squared, so I'm going to have x and x here. Now let's have a quick look at the constant on the end, negative 6. What are the factor pairs of 6? Six? 6 has factor pairs 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Uh, so they've got to be one of my numbers. And we're looking for a factor pair that adds up to negative 5. Okay, so but remember 1 has to be positive and 1 has to be negative. Like 2 and 3 adds up to 5. But we're actually going to be having one positive and a negative one. So I actually think the one we're looking for is this pair here. This, the 1 and the 6, isn't it? So it's going to be... Uh, plus 1 because and minus 6 that's going to give me negative 5 in the middle isn't it okay now if this was an equation uh, it would have roots then at negative 1 and positive 6 then so if I was going to draw a sketch of this um, quadratic all quadratics have this kind of parabola shape don't they okay and then this particular parabola is going to have two roots, uh, which we've just kind of worked out, haven't we? So the one on the left, x plus 1, that's going to give you a root of minus 1. And x minus 6 is going to give you a root of 6. So this graph is going to look something like this. So where would the y-axis be? doesn't really matter. It would be somewhere in between. Uh, now we want to know when this function is less than zero. So what's what what sections of the number line for x uh, does this is this graph negative? Okay. Well, it's below the axis in this section from here to here, isn't it? Okay. On the other sides, here it's above the axis, and here it's above the axis. So it's just those bits between minus six and six where this function is below the, the x-axis or negative, okay? So the, the region we're looking for is the region between minus 1 and 6. So x then lies between 6 and minus 1. Now I do recommend that you do a sketch like this because otherwise it gets a bit confusing and I know many students make mistakes with it. So I do recommend drawing the parabola working out where the roots are and then thinking where is that graph greater than or less than zero. Uh, I think that's the smartest way of doing it. Okay, so that's my range. X lies between minus one and six. Well, I hope this video helped you get a better overview of the topic. If it did, give it a thumbs up. You can find more exam question compilations over here. For more past paper walkthroughs, click down here. If you want to visit my Amazon shop with my recommendations for calculators, revision guides and other maths related stuff, click down here. Good luck in your revision and in your exams and see you again.